Hello Freedom Seekers, Jeremy Chambers, Independence Acres Homestead. In this video, I'm going to be kind of going off the beaten path for us a little bit, and I'm going to start doing a couple product reviews. And the first review we're going to do is of this beast right here. Now I know what you're thinking, but this is a homestead channel, not a product review channel. Well, I'll correct you there. I have done a few product reviews. One of my most popular ones talks about the uh, dump cart that we use behind our four-wheeler and our snow plow that we use on the four-wheeler. So I decided to kind of take that route again today. And the reason why we're gonna talk about this beast here is because, well, number one, I haven't found too many videos talking about it. And number two, we've really enjoyed using this product. Um, and when it comes to homesteading, I think that uh, finding ways to preserve and store your food to keep it as fresh as possible is super important. So without further ado, this is the product here. This is the Excalibur 12 inch pro vacuum sealer. And um, it is a beast. You turn it on and it just sounds like a jet engine getting ready to take off. You ready for this? You hear that? Those are the cooling fans in there, making sure that it doesn't overheat as we are sealing in that delicious goodness um, using the power of vacuum. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off while we talk some more about the product. So we had a food saver product for about 10 years, and don't get me wrong, it was a great product while it worked. But we had an issue with it starting to not be able to maintain a vacuum. In order to get a good seal, I was having to lay on the top of it in order to hold it down. And it just was starting to fail. And this was one of the, pro the, the top of the line products from the Food Saver company uh, that was available you know, 11, 12 years ago. We got it secondhand from somebody when they moved. So uh, it cost me nothing. But at the time, that was about a $250 vacuum sealer. So, you know, pretty good quality. It lasted 12 years, and we put it through some pretty hard use between our rabbit processing, um, garden uh, harvest storage, and, you know, freezing. Uh, we also like to purchase in bulk, and so we'll buy in bulk and split it up and put it in the freezer. We also, if they're, you know, the grocery store has um, meats on manager special, you know, markdown, need to get rid of it. We'll buy up a bunch of the roasts and steaks and chickens and pork chops, whatever's available. Because, well, let's just be honest, everybody's got a budget. And, you know, that brings me to the next point on this, is that when you think about a food saver or a vacuum sealer, um, you're thinking about, you know, cost. Well, I do. I'm kind of cheap, you know, to be honest. If, if you've watched any of my other, other videos, you know that I'm a little frugal. So when it comes to cost... That's where I balked a little bit at getting this product, but it's pretty much in line with a lot of your other, you know, commercial or, you know, professional series vacuum sealers, you know, such as the LEM or some of the products that are sold at some major retailers um, that, you know, go towards uh, hunting. Um, if you know what I'm talking about, you've seen their products and they're not cheap. And this is a, made in the very similar style. We've got a nice stainless steel body here. Stainless steel is really nice because it's easy to clean and maintain. Um, the, the ceiling lid here, nice, thick acrylic. Uh, once again, very, not porous, very easy to clean and sanitize, which is important if you're using this to seal meats. Uh, and then nice, solid, sturdy seals on the vacuum area. Uh, nice, wide ceiling uh, surface for the heat tape and then the, the, uh, the thermal pad on this side. About the only thing that we've noticed so far that is kind of a little bit of a, of a hiccup in, the, in this system, in this, this product, is the, the Teflon over the top of the heat bar. Kind of wrinkles a little bit. Um, it's kind of thin and flimsy, but it is probably easily replaceable. So we could put some, some new heat tape on this and just make it a little more sturdy. But other than that, we've used this for about uh, two dozen rabbits, various roasts and steaks, and it's done a great job. Um, I haven't put it through all the tests with dry goods, uh, but a couple of the other reviews that I found online say it does a really good job. But one of the things that really made this thing stand out from the competition is this right here. It actually has a vacuum start button and a seal button on the handle. Now, why is this important? Well, when you're packaging up 
odd shaped items. Uh, sometimes you need to hold the bag and you know push down here while you're activating. And you need two, one hand on the bag and one hand to hold down on the seal so it gets a good vacuum start. And so that means you've got to let go of something in order to push the buttons up here. But with the buttons right here on the handle, and there's no electrical connection from the handle to the body. It's through a, a, an infrared sensor. And so that's kind of cool, and I like that. Uh, there's a battery inside the handle here. There's a battery compartment under the handle that uh, makes it easy to replace the battery. So, you know, just a really smart and intelligent design. Um, it's got all of the functions that you'd expect. Uh, you've got your basic on off switch. So you plug it in, you get your power light on, push on off. It starts up, sounds like a jet engine taking off. It's got two fans in there to cool the pump and the heating, uh, the heating element. It's got a marinade and uh, accessory port. If you look right there, see that little, that little uh, black rubbery gasket right there? That's an accessory port for plugging in a hose to vacuum down canisters or canning jars. Um, we don't have that accessory hose. It is something that comes separate. It also has a pulse vac uh, function, which it only pulls a vacuum for as long as you're holding the start button. Uh, seal, so it will just seal in, uh, rather than you know running through the full vacuum stage and sealing stage. One other thing I really like about this is one of the problems we had with um, just your standard um, off-the-shelf, you know, regular old vacuum sealer is that it would vacuum down and then it would release the vacuum just before it sealed, or it would seal, but then I have to put it back in and run it again because you know it was a thicker or heavier duty bag. And so you can get a heavier duty bag and you can adjust your seal time. So that way, you know, if you have a thinner bag, you can run that, that seal time for one or two seconds. We found three seconds to work with most bags. Or if you've got a really heavy duty bags, you can bump that sucker up to eight or nine seconds of seal time and get a nice solid seal on there. And also, like I said, it's a, it's a five millimeter sealing strip on there. So you're getting a much wider sealing, uh, a much wider strip, you know, melting together than your standard, uh, you know, residential grade, you know, home use grade vacuum seals. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab some roasts that we bought on, uh, on Manager Special and uh, I'm gonna show you how this thing works. So what we're going to be sealing up today are some tri-tip roasts that we got on the reduced section at a local grocery store. Once again, you can't beat that. Another cool thing about this is, well, number one, it's an Excalibur product. And if you're in the homesteading realm and you don't know what Excalibur is, well, um, they make some of the best dehydrators. Um, but anyway, uh, this actually came with a roll of eight inch vacuum bag material. So to cut to your own size. And um, we're gonna go ahead and seal up the first end here. We're just gonna set it in there, turn her on. Here comes the jet engine. That just sounds like power. All right, and we're just gonna seal this one side here. Now you're gonna hear the pump run and what that does, it's to pull down uh, on the handle here and this plate in order to get a nice tight seal on the heat tape before it turns on the heat tape. So we're gonna go ahead and push the seal button here on the handle. Vacuums down. Release the vacuum. We can lift. You can see we got a nice, clean, five millimeter wide seal. And I know that seal. I don't have to go back in and put in a second seal like I do with some other competitor brands. And um, it's still got that seal time of three seconds. Once again, I'm just gonna use one hand here, squeeze out some of the air, and then it's just a one hand operation. I don't have to reach up here and push buttons. Everything's right here on the handle. Now it's transitioning over to sealing. And we are done. It releases the vacuum, handle up, and that's it. Nice tight seal. Um, it's got a collection tray here, so in case it does suck any of the uh, the meat juices up in, it's not going to go into the vacuum. And I'm just I'm so happy with this. We have yet to have a freezer burn issue from uh, from from this vacuum sealer. Two and a half pound tri-tip roast. 
uh, ready to go into the freezer. Should be good for a couple years. All right, here's roast number two, already in the bag. We've got it pretty much set out. You don't even have to push too hard on this. You're just going to push down enough to put, uh, you know, put a little pressure on it, just so that the vacuum can get started well. Once again, we've got it set at a three-second seal time, which should be more than enough for these bags that actually came from Excalibur. We'll then press the start button here. The vacuum working on a 10-second vacuum cycle. Second seal on there. Vacuum releases. And here we go. The last thing we're going to package up in this video is a uh, brisket that I smoked yesterday. And um, this is just the point. We ate the flat already. So we're going to package this up. Here we go. We got brisket, all vacuum sealed, nice and solid, ready to go. This will be good for six months to a year in the freezer, although it's not going to last that long in this household. All in all, we've been pretty happy with this machine, and um, you know its controls are rather intuitive. Tonight was actually the first night I've read the owner's manual, just because I want to make sure I didn't screw up some of the information for you guys, but. You know, I know I'm a guy. That's just what happens. If there's something that I would change about it, like I said, it would just be the Teflon on the ceiling strip here. Um, it has performed well for everything we've thrown at it, whether dry goods, haven't done a lot of dry goods, but like drier meats, like the brisket that we just did, uh, rabbit, chicken, um, ground meats have done really well in this. We're just really happy with it. Like I said, though, the price point is a little high but for a quality machine like this, it's kind of what you would expect. And for the, some of the features that it has in comparison with others in the same price range, for me, it was pretty much a no-brainer, especially having this remote on the handle. Last thing is the cycle. Um, some people have been asking the question about, you know, how long do I have to wait between um, cycles? Well, according to the Excalibur website, this thing is good for up to 100 sealing cycles before it needs a rest. Now, that's a pretty good large amount of vacuum sealing bags. And um, it does recommend that you let it cool or let it, you know, go 20 seconds between every, every sealing cycle, which that's, um, that's pretty good because it takes just about that long to take the bag out, Wipe it down, set it over, grab your next bag, make sure the inside is clean, get it all lined up, set it down, get the lid closed. If you can do that in faster than 20 seconds, maybe this machine is not for you. But if it takes you about 20 seconds, 20 to 30 seconds between every bag to get it in here, you're good for at least 100 cycles before uh, it's going to need uh, some time to rest. So if you're like us and in the market for a new, higher quality vacuum sealer than those plastic bodied models that you find at most big box stores, hopefully you'll check out the Excalibur. It's been a great choice for us. Well, that wraps up our review of the Excalibur 12 inch uh, professional series vacuum sealer. Hopefully this video has been informative and entertaining, if nothing else. We really appreciate you checking out this machine with us. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions specifically about this machine, let me know in the comments below and I'll do what I can to get back to you as soon as possible. And that wraps it up. Until next time, God bless.